I love Gen Z. After all, I have two Gen Z kids and I have been having a blast talking with organizations about why now is the time to start reaching out to Gen Z. And I know it might seem like they're a little young, but I promise you Gen Z is going to be a beast in the economy and how they're spending and where they're spending their dollars. And now is the time to get in front of them, start building those relationships and building sustainability in your fundraising over the long run. So I have Emmanuel Rose joining me on today's podcast to talk all about strategies when it comes to marketing to Gen Z and getting in front of them on the social media landscape. Emmanuel Rose is a recognized expert in lead generation, branding, advertising, and the day-to-day operations of a digital agency ready to help you build your business today. For over 25 years, Emmanuel has gone to work each day seeking pioneer, cutting-edge lead generation and marketing strategies for the benefit of his clients. Emmanuel's rich and diverse experience evidences the strength of his unique skill set, acquired through years of persistent growth, leading a digital agency, and serving as a pioneering professional in lead generation and retention. This expertise and understanding is not only central to the success of Emmanuel's career, but his leadership of the digital agency he founded. As the CEO of Strategic E-Marketing, Manuel, Emmanuel is at the forefront of driving digital solutions with machine learning for lead generation for all of Strategic E-Marketing's clients in Oregon and beyond. Doing so with an in-depth understanding of the opportunities and challenges seen for clients across digital agency landscape and utilizing his enviable expertise in leading generation to leveraging a leading advantage for all his valued clients. You're going to get some great marketing strategies, some fun ways to think about Gen Z, and also just why you should even care about this generation in the first place. So I don't want to share too much in this in- intro. I don't want to take away his thunder. Uh, but if you aren't you know, really excited about adding a marketing strategy for Gen Z that after this episode, then we need to talk. Which brings me to what this episode is sponsored by. This episode sponsored by our digital marketing therapy sessions, one-on-one 30 minute sessions that you can have with me. We can develop a specific marketing strategy for Gen Z or whatever, or talk about your messaging and elements that are part of your plan to make sure you're just connecting with people on a personal and a human level. Because really that's what it's all about. So head on over to the firstclick.net slash office hours, snag your time and let's get chatting. Let's get into the episode. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Vidal Mulhern. Each month, we dive deep into a digital marketing or fundraising strategy that you can implement in your organization. Each week, you'll hear from guest experts, nonprofits, and myself on best practices, tips, and resources to help you raise more money online and reach your organizational goals. Hello, hello. Please join me in welcoming my guest today, Emmanuel Rose. Emmanuel, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation, Sammy. Yeah, we were uh, cracking up because today's conversation is Gen Z and you know, they're the tech generation. And as soon as we got ready to start recording, my whole computer crashed. So (laughs) I don't know what that means, but uh, tech issues happen to us all. So I'm excited to kick this off with you um, and talk about Gen Z, which is a topic that I love and I think people aren't talking about enough. Uh, So why don't you just kind of kick it off with telling us why Gen Z is a topic that you're passionate about? Well, passionate. The biggest reason was because I wanted to understand my nephews and uh, they were so different from me. And and so I started to do some psycho psychographic research to understand those those boys. Right. And, uh, you know, they're we're together. We're in a, in a room. They're on their phones. They're, you know, 19 years old. They don't have their driver's license. You know, they're still <laughs> living, with, living with their mom. You know, all this stuff, kind of the jokes of it. And I was like, well, but I love these guys and I want to understand them. So that was where I got started was was caring about my nephews. And then I found out there's 68 million of them and that they're the biggest buying force in our country right now. And so as a marketer, that got my attention. Uh, so that was that's the true story. <laughs> I, well, and I think I love that because I, I do think a lot of times 
older generations look at newer generations and just want to complain about them or want to call out some of the things that they just don't understand as opposed to really dive in and learn about what makes them tick. Because really, in actuality, we are the reason that they are that way, right? The things that we've done and the way that we either raise them or the technology that we've helped to build and create is what has made them who they are. So I think that's awesome that you just wanted to to learn more <laughs> about them. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. So why don't you share and kind of let everybody know if they don't know who exactly Gen Z is, like what is Gen Z? What are the, some characteristics around them and how old are they now? Like what are kind of are the yeah. ranges there? Yeah. So they're uh, somewhere between like 12 and 26, 27 is is the the age group right now and uh and they're literally the the first generation that is is digital first digital only they've never known a day without the internet and without mobile phones and so that orientation has really changed a lot of things about their psychology their biochemistry the way they socialize and the way they see the world and uh, in, in terms of everything has to start from digital. Um, they, that's how they talk to their friends. That's how they consume news and information. And, uh, and that's how, how they're marketed to is, is through uh, primarily through digital, right? They don't like email. Uh, they they want to have instant messaging. They literally have an attention span shorter than a goldfish. Uh, this goldfish has a six second attention span. Uh, these these guys have got a, it's like two point six seconds or something. So, uh, but the the flip side is they're super passionate about the things they believe in, and uh, and if you can connect with them at that level, then you have a much better chance of of introducing them to your products or services. Yeah, uh, I have uh, my daughter was born in two thousand eight, which I think was the year the first iPad came out. So she's mm-hmm. proud of that. She's I, I'm as old as the <laughs> iPad. Um, she's right. told me that several times. Well, and I think we've been on this constant evolution. I think with millennials moving into Gen Z, where communication and connection to brand has mattered more and more and more, to the point where people will spend more money on a brand that they feel personally connected to than even a sure. similar brand because they have no connection. And so would you say like that is just continuing to pull through and brands really need to connect on a deeper level? It's not just about here's the benefits and features of our product, but it's more, hey, here's how this is going to impact your lifestyle and be a part of who you are, not just something that you own or use. Yeah, I, I would agree with that in that, uh, that you know, you look at Richard Branson or Kylie Jenner and um, and and you say, well, here are these people who have super transparent lives and that and and we know, you know, um, a lot about them and about what they care about. And so we can connect to them um, emotionally and then they have products and services that we need. And that makes it much, much uh, more likely to make a sale. And for, for Gen Z, it's critical that you have to, they've been pitched on the internet since uh, they can remember right from the very beginning. So they have to have a different differentiator and the emotional connection is, uh, is, is, is critical as well as, you know, they, ha- they're looking for, they understand how to find good deals and yeah. because they are a little bit younger, they don't have as big a budgets, but they're still hardworking people that believe in the value of money and uh, and uh, understand value, right? Importance, utility, and worth. And so right. the more that you can connect the dots and be a real human, be connected to things that are important in, in the environment and in, in social causes, then the more likely are you're going to be able to transact successfully with, uh, with this cohort. Well, and this is a good thing for nonprofits, right? Because Gen Z does... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Gen Z does favor experiences and interaction and community over things like a house. You mentioned your nephews don't care to drive a car. I've been having this conversation with a lot of parents. Like our kids don't really care to get their license. It's a very bizarre thing to me. Um, But having a car, having a house, like those kinds of things are not as important. It's more about that community connection and experience. And so for nonprofits, if you can connect their, their values with what you do and bring them into your organization in a meaningful way. Like they could be a powerful subset of, of people coming into your organization. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And and so uh, as a funding source, as uh, staffing, because they're willing to to work uh, and and they you know they are driven by money as a as a group, but they're also gonna always well I don't want to say always, but mostly they're gonna be driven more by their values and their beliefs. So you know uh, you've got that opportunity for staffing and then also for, for volunteers. And like you said, the experiences, right? We just used to call it going and doing something. Well, now they call <laughs> it experience. <laughs> and so the more you can orient uh, your events or um, opportunities to 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 go and participate in doing things, uh, the more attractive it will be for this group. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to jump into a couple specific marketing strategies that you love with Gen Z, but is there anything else that we might want to know or just have in the back of our minds about kind of the psychology behind uh, Gen Z? And I mean, like 12 to 27 is a pretty broad age group. Uh, And so, you know, kind of how might we want to really just get into the brains of of Gen Z? What, What might we want to think about? Well, I think, uh, you know, we yeah, do yeah. have a mental health crisis uh, based on on the cell phone addiction and the uh, Internet. And so, I mean, I think, you know, that's on all seriousness that that is a real issue. And so there's a certain amount of uh, compassion <laughs> that we have to have initially for this group because we have set up a, a environmental situation which is not healthy. Um that being said, I, I think I think of it as that their their lifetime. You know, if you think about the the sequencing of a life uh, and, and development of a human being, you know, we used to get out of the house at eighteen and never look back at our parents, right? Like we had those kind of developmental patterns. It, you're married by thirty, you know, those things. These guys are a little bit uh, delayed in in the way that they're approaching their lifestyle. Um, I think part of it is because they. they do have it really easy at home. And I think that's our fault, right? Like, um, <laughs> we made it a little too, a little too soft. And, uh, and so they have no reason to leave the nest. Um, and, and so that, that has led to some delay from typical progression. So, um, you're kind of slow walking and you're creating events and you're, uh, accepting the fact that they don't have the, the social skills that we're, right. we're used to in the older generations. Some of that's COVID. Some of that's just the fact that they've always just been on the phone. And, yeah. and so that's one of the things I see, right, is that the older, you know, Xers and boomers are like, you know, they just don't know how to talk. They don't know how to look at you in the eye, you know, whatever they're, they're griping about. Like, yeah, that's true. And we got to find a way to work around that, you know. Yeah. And I would um, I would challenge people to really think about it in the sense that everything has been like a big a progressive shift, right? Like when the first TV came out, even in black and white and you have three channels, it was, Oh, the TV is going to ruin this gener. Like every time there's new things, that's, what's going to ruin the generation. And so I love that you're doing all this research and you're bringing all this to light because it's like, it's not like things are not going to revert back to face to face conversation. Like we have to understand that the way that Gen Z is communicating and the way that millennials are communicating is shifting, right? Then Gen Alpha, who knows what's going to happen with them, right? right? But it's just going to continue to progress. And so I think if you're a nonprofit leader wanting to connect with Gen Z, it's just like in any other audience, meeting them where they are and finding ways to connect in ways that are authentic to them, even though it might be a little bit more uncomfortable for you. Like that's how we continue to navigate in marketing and in business. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. The other part that you just triggered for me is that they're the most ethnically diverse uh, cohort Mm. in the United States also. So almost 50 percent of them are mixed race. And so that's something uh, that you just have to be sensitive to and understand that it's it's an issue for them. Right. And that's part of the reason why we've seen an outgrowth of so much of the social movement. And they will tell you like it is. At least my Gen (laughs) Z kids do. (laughs) Yeah. You can't say that. You can't do that. You need, yeah. Anyway, well, let's get into some specific marketing strategies. So if we're thinking about a plan for how we want to reach uh, Gen Z, because they are, you know, very much a social media generation. Uh, So how, like, what is kind of your first big tip for how uh, we might want to approach Gen Z? 
right now TikTok and TikTok ads are are still uh, still the scalpel for for reaching this cohort. So yeah. uh, you don't have to have a TikTok. You don't have to be a TikTok influencer, but you do need a TikTok ads account and uh, and to to build that out around events or just around consistent um, branding um, or or donation you know requests. But that that's the 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 simplest one right now. <laughs> well, and um, TikTok. So I think the other thing too is like a lot of organizations are nervous about getting on TikTok, but you can repurpose that content on the other channels for your other audiences, right? And there's a lot of brands that are doing like really cool stuff. It doesn't have to be like goofy dances or stupid jokes and things like that. Like you can be very still very authentic to your brand and still be publishing on TikTok. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even if you don't want to publish on TikTok, but you just want to run ads that I do that for a lot of the clients also, and we just run campaigns and it's very affordable and it's very targetable. So does you know, TikTok have any fundraising capable, like native built into the platform, like Facebook or YouTube do not yet? I don't think so. I, I haven't, I haven't seen yeah, I haven't it. Heard it either. I'd love to hear about it in your comments. If somebody has found a way to do it natively, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. So what are your feelings on brands being on Snapchat? You know, it's uh, it's a challenge to be on Snap because that's not really how they how they see it and interact with it. Right. It's kind of mm-hmm. like me as an exer. I think of my text messages as my personal space. And when I get attacked by <laughs> You know, I get pounded in text message. I'm like, I, I will not pay a second attention to it because it feels like it's invasive. So that that's in my research. That's what I've seen is that snaps kind of, you know, off limits. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, that I feel like Snapchat is like their group messaging. Like it's it's more right. just like you said, it's about just like personal. Yeah, they don't want to be sold to by a brand and, and Snapchat. I mean, there are some brands yeah. that are doing it great, but. I don't, I think that's few and far between. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a tough one to navigate and it's, uh, it would be like, uh, you know, like the last step in a tertiary approach, right? (laughs) There's a lot of other much easier things to do before you get to that point for snap. Yeah. So when we think about TikTok, I think that's like short form video is key, right? Like how important is video to Gen Z? compared to like a static image or like a long form uh, social media post. Yeah. The, so the idea, again, I was making light of it in the, the attention span of the goldfish, but the reality is that we've got a very short time span to get attention. And so um, video typically is going to garner more attention in a shorter time. And, um, and so that's the reason to approach, approach with more, of a, you know, at least a B testing video versus still and making sure uh, that whatever your your uh, theory is 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 accurate. Um, but you've got to have a video component and um, and the images are important. You know, I'm I'm old school all, all the way back to Claude Hopkins and the in the, that marketing where you've got water, babies, puppies, right? Yeah, and you want you got to have a, an emotional hook. Um, and you also need to make sure that anything that you do is 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 um, representative of the of the marketplace. So you've got to have cultural representation. That's that's uh, mm. you're at least attempting that as well, right? To get attention. Well, and what does that mean? Like, could you talk a little bit about like building trust? Because I feel like this generation is also very. I don't want to say cynical, but kind of like they don't really like you have to prove to them that you are who and what you say you are. Like they don't trust brands, especially nonprofits very easily. So like, do you feel like video helps to build and bridge that trust factor faster than images or just copy and words? No, absolutely. I, I encourage the executive director or the CEO or the manager to, to do 90 seconds of video every Monday morning about projects, about um, major campaigns, about uh, s- the staff of the week or staff of the month and, and, and have that video presence that then can be repurposed in that Gary Vaynerchuk style, right? One 90, mi- 90 seconds of, of 
video can turn into 75 pieces of content. Uh, but it provides, like you're talking about, a very true and authentic uh, view into the organization. And that's the only way you get through cynicism is to have that consistent messaging from mm. a real person. And yeah. just think Kylie Jenner, right? I mean, how many hundreds and hundreds of hours of TV and YouTube and TikTok does she have? And that's what, what they expect is that you're, they're going to see under the hood of, of an organization or a business or a person in order to trust that it's the real thing. So you touched on two things there. One is visible visibility of people behind the brand, not just the brand and consistency, right? Yeah. right? Not just showing up one time, but showing up over and over and over and over again. Um, I love that. And this kind of made me think about kind of the reverse. So if we are boomer Gen X, uh, hiring people, uh, you mentioned earlier that company or that, you know, Gen Z wants to work for companies that are engaged in social impact in some way, shape or form. Right. So us yeah. as a nonprofit leader, like how could we even, like, we could even take a look at approaching our sponsors and corporate sponsors in a new way. And that like, how can we work with you on an internal campaign so that you can have better, uh, retention of your Gen Z employees because they see that social impact piece. Yeah, absolutely. The um, the connect that the nonprofits can do a better job of helping uh, corporate or, or small business companies promote the fact that they're supporting them, right? Um, and even to the point where if you've got donors that don't even have you listed on their website, right? Like just that, just a very simple fundamental thing, and then to do some cross blog posting, right? Like just those two things would be of a big value for your, your corporate sponsors. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So we, you talked about TikTok. We've talked about short form video, kind of what other marketing strategies do you have up your sleeve for Gen Z? I would go back to the events and, and, um, and experiences that, uh, you know, they don't want to go to a gym, but they'll go to a slack lining day. Right. Mm. Uh, they want they want whatever is new or unusual. They don't want to go camping with their parents. They want to go glamping. Right. <laughs> they want, <laughs> they yep. don't want to just go to a baseball game where they want to go, you know, uh, throw out the first pitch and then take batting practice or whatever. So we've got to think about it more like like they're your nephews or your nieces and that you want to. um Make it something that is is memorable that they want to text their friends about. They want to post on Instagram, and um, that it's a it's a it's a full beginning to end. That they get picked up in a uh, you know in a hearse and driven somewhere, and then <laughs> it's uh, you know it's the it's the haunted house or whatever right. whatever the, the event is. That it there's a whole theme throughout the entire event, and they can brag about it through uh, the the social channels that they have. So. It it takes some time to think about how you make how you program it correctly so that it's uh, memorable and 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 speech worthy. <laughs> no, I love this, and it makes me think about like um, I think I might have talked about this. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast or not, but like my kids have these YouTubers that they follow, and a lot of these YouTubers are in their early twenties, and they're making multiple millions of dollars, right? Or these influencers on TikTok, right? They're making a ton of yeah. money. But right. when you watch the ways that they give back to charity, they're doing it through their channel. So like, I don't know if you watch the Penny Challenge with Ryan Trahan. I've been talking about him a lot lately in my circle because yeah. he just did this whole series where he raised $407,000 for water.org by starting with a penny in Paris and having to fly home and like engages in all of these with all these other YouTubers to raise all this money, bring awareness. But it's still him doing something that he does, Right. Um, I mean, Mr. Beast is somebody everybody talks about who now has a whole philanthropic arm. So I think there's two points, right? Like, how can you create the experiences? But then how can we also work with influencers? And they don't have to be the 13 million followers, even like local (laughs) influences in your community. But how can we be creative with them? Because they're more likely to share experiences on social media than our Gen X and boomer generations. For sure. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And yeah, there's there's lots of ways to figure out who your influencers are locally, or even to to go online and do some research and, and find um, you know some influencer connectors. 
um, that, yeah. that believe in the things that you believe. So um, it's it's something that if you're if it's not a big part of your budget yet, that you're going to want to start uh, testing and figuring out how to how to do it uh, to its its best advantage for you. Could you share maybe a couple like if we wanted to reach out to some folks on social media or start conversations with Gen Z online since that's where they're living? Um, like what's the best kind of approach to start that conversation? Because I guarantee you they don't want to hear, hey, here we're organization X and we do this cool stuff. Can we chat? Like they don't want to <laughs> know about that. So like how can we kind of start to soft lay up some of these conversations and build relationships with Gen Z on social? Yeah, the 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 classic classic. There's two things. One is the pro- problem solution call to action, right? It, tr- to treat it like a traditional uh, ad. Um, so that's the first thing. But again, that it's got to be in these snapshots, um, quick hitting video. Uh, the other way is is through the success stories and through the stories of the people that the organization is supporting or the if, or the projects if it's not people, right? So that. Uh, there's there's an emotional component that that we're we're drawn in and showing uh, the value um, and and some of it that that looks alike to them and it, mm-hmm. it mirrors their values. Um, so those are the the two. If I was only going to do two approaches, that those are them. But values alignment is critical. It really is. It, it like you said, it gets through the cynicism, and um, you can't just. They're not just looking to buy a product, right? I mean, they know how to do that. They can go to Amazon and buy a product. So yeah. we want to continue to to have uh, tell the story of what it is that we're accomplishing and how we're doing it, and who the people are that work in our organization, and who the people are that we're helping with our organization. I love that. Okay. So if people are listening to this and they're like, okay, maybe I should be talking to Gen Z, but they're not quite convinced. Could you just kind of, before we wrap this up, touch on, um, kind of what the upcoming buying power is of Gen Z? Because, um, I think currently, right. Millennials and Gen Z make up the largest part of the population, but I think it's what by 2026, Gen Z will just be the largest part of they're, the population. They're so, the biggest cohort. Yeah. They're bigger, bigger than boomers and, uh, and X combined. And they'll, they have, uh, su- supporting buying decisions on almost a trillion dollars a year. So every, every product and service that, that, uh, we have, they're influencing how it's, uh, how it's consumed. And I think now is kind of the perfect time, right? Because if you're hitting the 12 to 19 year old part of Gen Z, you're hitting, you're getting them. I mean, I get five times a day. My son who's 12 is coming up to me, mom, I just saw this. Can we get it? Can we get this? I just saw this. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, so you're influencing not just the kids, but you're influencing the parents who have the dollars. And then you're also hitting the 19 to 27 year olds who have the income and who are building in their buying habits and and the organizations they want to um, commit to on their own. So it's kind of like a perfect time to really hit them with authentic messaging and kind of create raving fans. Not only that, and I agree 100% with that, but um, the rest of us are also getting bombarded with messaging all day long, every day. And and so this, this psycho, psychographic approach and um, authentic approach is is the way to cut through a lot of the noise um, for, for the entire marketplace. So yeah. the, the more that you have these messages go out from, for instance, if it's video from the CEO, that's going to attract not just not just the Z's, but it's going to attract everybody else in the market. So um, I know that's we as marketers, we never want to say, "Oh, we're going after the whole market," but it is one <laughs> universal truth that it's a way through the cynicism that we're all getting the thick skin to the ten thousand messages a day, and and the more that I can see a human um, interacting with me, the more likely I am to to participate. Uh, I love that you said that because I think it's right. Um, if you're nervous about reaching out to one targeted demographic, to your point, you're not going to alienate anybody else. It's still going to help foster those other relationships. You just got to exactly. show up on Facebook if you want to hit, you know, nah, Gen X and the boomers. Yes. Exactly. Platforms. Know, my- it's platforms. Yeah. Is it? I love it. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> Gen Z is not on Facebook. That is for no. certain. 
No. Um, okay. Any last words of wisdom? Otherwise, um, Emmanuel, thank you so much for sharing all of these amazing tips. Um, and I would love for you to share how people can connect with you more and learn more about the book that you wrote that talks even more about this topic. Yeah, thanks. It's um, EmmanuelRose.com is the is the website where you can track me down and uh, the the uh, books that I've written on marketing and also a series of children's books. So um, we've got the email and phone number there and love to hear from you. Awesome. And we'll link all of that up in the show notes at thefirstclick.net slash 216. Um, Emmanuel, I appreciate you being here and allowing me to talk about one of my most favorite topics these days. So they're hearing it from someone else and not just me, uh, which I love. So thank you so much for being here. All right. Thank you, Sammy. I really enjoyed it. Okay, so are you convinced? Are you ready to start marketing to Gen Z and building them into your donor funnels? I really hope that you are. And I know that it can be scary to think about other platforms like TikTok or getting out there and doing more video creation, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It can just be you and your phone. And like he said, creating a 90 second, just quick video that you can repurpose in multiple different places. And hey, while you're at it, Get some Gen Z volunteers to help you edit that video and put it out to their own audience. Who better to help you figure out what's going to connect with Gen Z than Gen Z themselves? So if you loved this episode, make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this right now or on YouTube and head on over to the firstclick.net slash 216 for the show notes and additional resources here, including the book that Emmanuel wrote about Gen Z. Now, thank you so much for listening. I am so glad you're here with us for our month all about social media, and I will see you in the next one.